Welcome to this video on summing a geometric series. Uh, this is one of those things that is not, strictly speaking, a uh, signals and systems topic, but it turns out it's one of those math things that comes up so often that it's really useful that you know it. Uh, particularly because unlike uh, taking integrals or computing integrals, uh, doing summations doesn't seem to stick with students for reasons that aren't clear to me. Um, but I remember as a student, I could do an integral without any trouble, but when I started summing geometric series, it was ugly for a while. So this is it. The idea is that you have a sequence of, uh, say, a signal where each element of the signal is some alpha raised to the nth power. So if you start at n equals 0, which quite often you do, uh, you'll have uh, sequence 1, alpha, alpha squared, alpha cubed, and so on. And you need to sum these up. You do that quite often when you're computing power in signals. Uh, you do it all the time when you're computing z-transforms. So this turns out to be an extremely important formula when you're doing z-transforms. So for those of you that uh, don't really want to know much more than the formulas, here they are. Uh, the sum uh, n going from 0 to cap n of alpha to the n is given by this expression. You take 1 minus, uh, 1 minus alpha to the n plus 1 divided by 1 minus alpha, and that gives you the sum. And in just a second, I'll do an example of this. And this is true as long as alpha is not equal to 1. Obviously, if alpha is equal to 1, this denominator is 1 minus 1, which is 0, and it blows up. But if alpha is equal to 1, the sum is just going to be cap n plus 1, because I'll have cap n plus 1 terms. Okay. The other situation is where uh, you're doing an infinite sum, uh, starting from n is equal to 0 and going all the way up to infinity of alpha to the n. And this is 1 over 1 minus alpha, as long as the magnitude of alpha is less than 1. And I use magnitude here because alpha can, in general, be complex in either of these formulas. And it turns out that there are a lot of situations where that's true, particularly, again, if you're doing z-transforms. So um, those are the equations. Uh, what I'll do for the rest of this video is show you an example, and then those of you that really want to know how things work will actually derive these formulas. So for the example, uh, let's see. Let's bring up an empty window. And uh, why don't we look at the case where alpha is 3 fourths. And suppose I want to find the sum n going from 0 to 4. So in this case, cap n would be 4 of 3 fourths raised to the nth power. Now this one, I could actually just write out like this. If you're unfamiliar with summation notation, this is actually what this means. Um, So this is 3 fourths to the 0, 3 fourths to the 1, 3 fourths squared, 3 fourths cubed, and 3 fourths to the fourth. Okay. So basically what I'm doing is summing these five terms up. And again, this is a small enough uh, sum that it might just be easier to uh, write it out this way and then work it out. But I have this handy formula that says this will be 1 minus 3 fourths raised to the cap n plus 1. So cap n here is 4, and cap n plus 1 would be 5. And it's divided by 1 minus 3 fourths. And uh, when I worked this out earlier, I got 781 over 256, which is approximately 3.05. Okay. So there you have it. If you have a finite sum, that's how it works. In the case where I'm doing the sum n going from 0 to infinity of 3 fourths to the n, Again, uh, this one I can actually sum, and it will converge uh, as n goes to infinity because the magnitude of 3 fourths is less than 1. So this will be equal to 1 
over 1 minus 3 fourths, which is 1 over 1 fourth, which is 4. So if I sum this sequence all the way from 0 up to n equals infinity, it ends up giving me a value of 4. Okay, and again, uh, to apply these formulas for other alphas, you just plug the different alphas in and, and work it out the way we have. So how do we derive such a formula? It turns out this one is not hard to derive. There is a trick, though. So what we'll do to derive this formula is we'll define S sub n to be the summation n going from 0 to cap n of alpha n. Okay, and I'll write this out as 1 plus alpha plus alpha squared plus more terms plus alpha cap n minus 1 plus alpha to the n. Okay, and so basically this is the sum that I want to find. Uh, the way I find it is again through this handy trick, which once you've seen it is great. If you haven't seen it, this probably doesn't occur to you. I take S sub n and I multiply it by alpha. Okay, so I have 1 times alpha, which will be alpha. Then I'd have alpha times alpha, which is alpha squared. Then I would have um, uh, alpha times alpha squared, which is alpha cubed, and so on. And I'll end up out here with alpha n minus 1 plus alpha to the n plus alpha to the n plus 1. So this last term, I have alpha to the cap n. I multiply it by alpha. I get alpha to the cap n plus 1. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the second equation that I just wrote down, and I'm going to subtract it from the first equation. So I'll take the left-hand sides and subtract them. When I do that, I get s n minus alpha s n. Then I've got the right-hand sides. I've got 1, and there's nothing down here that is the same as 1, so I'll have 1. Now you'll notice I'll have alpha minus alpha, alpha squared minus alpha squared, and so on. Alpha n minus 1 minus alpha n minus 1, alpha n minus alpha n minus alpha n plus 1. So I just end up with, um, I've actually drawn the wrong sign here, 1 minus alpha to the n plus 1. And all these other terms cancel when I subtract the second equation from the first. Okay, now here on this side I can factor an s sub n out. So I have s n times 1 minus alpha is equal to 1 minus alpha n plus 1. And I divide both sides by 1 minus alpha, which I can do if alpha is not equal to 1. And I get Sn, the sum that I'm actually trying to find, is 1 minus alpha n plus 1 over 1 minus alpha. So there you have it. Um, for finite n, for, uh, you know, so I'm summing uh, cap n, actually cap n plus 1 values here, this is the equation. Whoops. Now, <clears throat> In the case where I want the sum going from uh, n, little n going from 0 to infinity, what I'm looking for is the limit as cap n goes to infinity of this Sn, which is the limit as cap n goes to infinity of 1 minus alpha to the n plus 1 over 1 minus alpha. Now, as long as the magnitude of alpha is less than 1, every time I increase n, I make this guy, or this whole guy, smaller. And so as n goes off to infinity, this term here approaches 0, leaving me with 1 minus, or 1 over 1 minus alpha, which is the result we had. So again, this is one of those things that's extremely useful when you're doing discrete time signal processing. You'll have need of it over and over again, and now you know how to derive it. So if you're sitting there and for some reason you've forgotten what the formulas are, you now know how to uh, figure out what the formulas are. 
um, and you've seen an example of how it works. So I hope this is helpful.